I know that this is a touchy subject. We're going to be talking about guns, and particularly in the U.S., it is a, it's become a partisan opinion. You know, some people are for guns, some people aren't. I happen to be a military guy, former, you know, I'm a veteran. Uh, I am trained. I continue further education. I continue to train. And so I, I want everyone to know before we get started, uh, I believe in gun safety and I believe that people who own and possess firearms ought to be very, very careful. They ought to be able and trained to use them properly. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. G'day everybody, Ross and Jono with you once again uh, for this week, we're gonna be discussing another controversial topic um, we really couldn't see it fit to return to any uh, topic or passage of the Bible considering what's going on in Israel. And um, so we felt it best to remain with uh, topics related to what's going on. And in this case, as you can see by the heading, uh, Guns and Moses and um, security. This is, you know, this is a, a hot topic at the moment and we want to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the things we're going to be covering, Ross? Uh, well, I, I listed four major points that we'll just kind of use as a structure to guide the discussion, Jono. Uh, it gives us enough flexibility, but I think it's important. The first thing I want to talk about, uh, you have stories, I have stories, we've talked about these offline, a rise in anti-Semitism, uh, not only in the U.S., but around the world. So we want to talk about that uptick, drastic uptick in anti-Semitism. Uh, we want to talk about, I wanted to bring up uh, something that's interesting that's going on in the United States, and that is this, that Jews traditionally, this is not a blanket statement, but generally Jews are on the left in the political realm in the United States. Uh, I don't know about all the diaspora, but particularly in the United States. And as a result mm. of that, they typically hold very... Uh, strong opinions. They're, they're not so much for guns. They're more for stringent gun control. And they're not very highly, uh, the population, the Jewish population is not very high in terms of gun ownership uh, in the United States. So we want to talk about that. I wanted to talk a little bit about a training center that you and I have been to in the land of Israel that, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. And then finally, I wanted to bring up, and this is sort of a sub bullet point, it kind of ties to all of them, and that is a piece of Talmudic wisdom or uh, hmm. a saying in the Talmud. You know, me, I'm not really a Talmudic scholar, but it's this idea that if someone comes to kill you, Jono Vandor, what do you do? You know this Talmudic saying? Rise up early and kill him first. That's right. That's right. So I'm mm -hmm. ready to start. Those are the those are the four things, and then we're going to go for a little while, and then we're going to invite our uh, supporters and our close friends and and uh, followers to uh, offer their own opinions on this. And uh, mm. so I'm I'm looking forward to a good show. This is a real good show. I can feel it already. I'm looking at a um, an article, Ross, in the Jerusalem Post just from a couple of days ago, and it is entitled Anti-Semitism Envoys Call on Governments to Ensure Necessary Security Assistance for Jews. Mm -hmm. uh, and it begins by saying the anti-Semitism envoys of 24 countries, including the United States, made a joint call for governments to protect their local Jewish communities in the wake of the Hamas October 7 attacks on Israel. The statement was posted Monday uh, just this, this past Monday, uh, with the signatures of 30 officials, in addition to representatives of countries across Europe and uh, North and South America, it includes signatories from multinational organizations like the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe and the Organization of America, uh, American States. It comes after the government of the United States and other nations have reported and condemned a spike in anti-Semitism over the past month. By the right. way, just speaking of um, uh, South America, I, I read this morning, was it this morning or last night, that Mossad and um, Brazilian security forces thwarted an attempt, an Iranian-organized attempt, uh, to be executed by 
um, Hezbollah operatives in Brazil against I, Jews. Did you read anything I, about that? I, I saw just a little bit, and I remember hmm. I had so many questions that I didn't I didn't follow up on it like I should, but it, everything seems so strange. Uh, in Brazil, Iranian, uh, this just goes to show you the far reach of these organizations, you know, and, and mm. Iran's uh, wicked plot, I guess you would say. Mm. So, so there have been attacks, there have been attacks in Sydney, I'm sure there's probably been attacks in Melbourne. Um, there are uh, reported attacks. I've been keeping a keen eye on what's going on around the states, and it's alarming. There's obviously uh, incidents in, in France and Canada and so on and so forth. Uh, this is, uh, we don't have to uh, elaborate too much to say that this is a, a worldwide phenomenon, as Dave was uh, pointing out earlier when we were talking. Um, and when people's lives are, when they face a credible threat, they have to think realistically about, uh, they have to put their ideologies aside, yeah. you know, what, what is the ideal and what is the world they want to live in and face the fact of the world they actually live in and how are they going to defend themselves? That's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, let me, let so, me, let me uh, say yeah, this... something that, that what you, I'm sorry, John, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, go ahead. Go I, ahead. I was just going to say, it, it's interesting. You, you kicked us off with this, the signatories, everyone is recognizing and, and this, is something people can Google. It is not just in the U.S. and Australia, but globally, we're seeing a spike drastically, and it depends on which source you use, uh, but I'm seeing numbers ranging from 390% increase, uh, and they have stats like documented cases. And first of all, how many of these cases are reported versus how many never even get reported, you know? Uh, or how do they mm -hmm. count uh, an event, an anti-Semitic event? But one of the things that I wanted to do was just because I was looking at a couple of data points trying to get ready to have this discussion with you, and this is on the ADL, the Anti-Defamation League's website. They can't even keep it updated with all of the events, but just if I could go through a couple of these events in the last few days in the U.S., Jono, if you're okay with that. Um, mm, go ahead. Th these were right on the, the edge of the October 7th. It's like the October 7th attack uh, took place in Israel, and then these just shot up worldwide, which says that immediately the enemies of Israel went to work. Like, it, it was an attack that, yes, it happened in Israel, but then it just spread out quickly like a dark, ominous cloud. October the 8th, uh, a car with individuals holding Palestinian flags intentionally intentionally swerved out of its lane, uh, you know, towards a, an obvious Jewish family. I don't know what obvious Jewish family means. It, it, I don't know if they had a bumper sticker or what. Uh, shouts towards Jewish students being harassed, shoved, and called effing Zionist. Uh, the word is used here, but I'm cleaning it up for our YouTube audience. Uh, and we're going to talk about the difference in Zionism and, you know, anti-Zionist versus anti-Semitic in just a minute. Uh, mm. An individual in Los Angeles shouted, I am Hamas, and made death threats to Jewish individuals standing by a kosher restaurant. A man carrying an Israeli flag was assaulted by a pro-Palestinian protester. By the way, I'm not going to read all these, but just in the last few days, uh, an, a man, 67-year-old man, Jewish man, was holding mm. a flag, an Israeli flag, as the protesters, pro-Palestinian protesters walked by. A person wielding a megaphone, Jono, struck this guy in the head, and he died. Now, people Knock, are knocked debating. Knocked him to the ground. Knocked yep. him to the and, ground, and yeah. Died as a result of his injuries, yeah. So the and then now people are debating. Well, did he did he die because of the hit to the face with the megaphone, or did he die when his head hit the ground? Uh, you know, it it the point is a Jewish man is now dead. Now let me ask you this, and I want the audience to really consider this. Flip that, just flip it, and just hypothetically, 
what if, what do you think would happen in the good old U.S. of A. if a Jewish man with a megaphone would have hit a pro-Palestinian and they died? What do you Mm. think would happen? I'm going to tell you right now, there would be cities on fire in this country right now. Mm -hmm. I guarantee Mm -hmm. it. And how do I know that? Past performance. Look at what's happened in the U.S. before. It's it's mm. just unbelievable, uh, but the list goes on. The sad and thing they, about it, these Ross, things is that, are on and on. And the sad thing about it, in, in a population as large as yours, is that somebody is going to fulfill that role eventually. Somebody is going to do something by which the media can, and and the um, pro terrorist movement can spin into oh uh, oh is Islamophobia and we're so victimized and this and that. Um, it, something's going to happen to to trigger that, and you'll see those. Uh, those riots likely happen once again, as they did in uh, Black Lives Matter riots, and and you know, yep. it, it's it's all the same uh, protests over again. And um, so people people need to be mindful of that. I don't think this is going back in the box anytime soon. And I if either. I had to place money on it, uh, I'd say that things are going to escalate rather than calm down. <clears throat> so. What what are people to do in 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 that situation? And uh, regardless of their 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 left leaning stances on um, uh, on on gun control and so on and so forth, it might be worth considering yep. uh, arming yourself because the only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is with a good guy with a gun. Yep. What's your thoughts on that, Ross? Uh, well, good question, and and let me say. To bridge these two together, you know, just uh, in the past couple of days here in the U.S., a pro-Palestinian woman driving a vehicle saw a building with a Star of David, and she assumed Mm -hmm. that it was a Jewish place of school, a Jewish school, and so she drives her car through the building, like trying to harm Mm. people, only to find out shockingly and disappointingly for her, that it not only was not a Jewish house of worship or a Jewish school, but... It was, uh, it was a fellow anti-Semite. It was a fellow anti-Semite. It's a, uh, the, the he, what do they call the African, the Hebrew the Israelite black Hebrew Black Hebrew Israelites. Yeah, and so... The, the black Hebrew Israelites. Now, that's, now I want to talk about this building. a little bit later. I, I don't know if now is the time. I think we'll touch on this just a little bit later, but it is a form of replacement theology, a little bit different to uh, Christian replacement theology. Black Hebrew Israelites say, no, 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 we are. See, so let me, let me just tell the difference here. So yeah. uh, Christian replacement theology is outlined in, uh, in Paul, uh, in, in, in Romans, right? Where he says, ah, oh, you know, it's like a tree and you break off the branches and they're the Jews and into the fire they go. Well, it doesn't say it in that passage. But then, yeah. you know, grafted back on is, uh, and we replace them, you know, the Christians replace them and this and that and the other. Well, what, what black Hebrew Israelites say is, no, 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 no. We've always been the branches. We've always, it's always been us. And they are imposters. They're not even on the truth. They're the imposters. They're not real. We're the real thing. Um, and that's the difference between these two different types of uh, replacement theology. And one is vastly more dangerous than the other. Or that is to say that um, black Hebrew Israelites can be very um, militant, uh, let's say aggressive uh, yeah. in their replacement theology, Ross. But um, yeah. yeah, so this woman, this woman sees a, um, a replacement synagogue, if you like, because it's got Star of David on it. And she's like, well, screw that. I'm going to go and drive into it only to find out that they're on side with her anyway. Well, it, you know, it's so that made me think I have, uh, because I teach for an organization, an 80-year-old uh, Jewish organization, United mm-hmm. Israel World Union, and we have a yeah. sign. Uh, you've been here. You've been to the building. Mm. You've spent uh, mm-hmm. several uh, days with me and uh, over last year. One of the things that I think about is that I have a Star of David out on the sign here, right outside the building, and Stars of David on both doors. So. Right. You know, you you have to be you have to have situational awareness. Now you have to have situational, and, and you do. And just like the um, Black Hebrew Israelites found out, if you're going to associate your yourselves in any way in the public eye, uh, regardless of your theological stance, then uh, uh, even you, 
need to think about, you know, worst case scenarios and how you're going to defend yourself. And um, synagogues and churches and all, all these places really should be very, very mindful of security, obviously, in this day and age, how much yeah. more so for synagogues now and anyone who, uh, um, any organization such as yours, that uh, United Israel, that supports uh, Israel. How do right. you go about that, Ross? I, well, uh, what I've done is uh, several things. Again, I believe in training. So I've been to training. Uh, United Israel has sent me to training on, you know, not only this situational awareness piece, but what to do, God forbid, that an event ever takes place that you need, uh, you have a, an infiltrator, someone who is hostile to the congregants. So first mm. off, I, I lock the doors here every day. And it's a habit. Everyone who comes in, Seth and I, anyone, it's a deterrent. What we know, and, and some of the training I've been to, and I'm, I'm hoping that other Jewish groups are listening to me now, most Jewish groups know this. Most synagogues, most uh, Jewish day schools, it's very much locked down. You have to have a purpose, and people have to know you to let you in. Uh, I also am armed. Uh, and not only do I have a uh, firearm, but I know how to use it. And it just happens mm -hmm. to be, I'll tell you, it happens to be an Israeli weapon uh, known as the Masada. And so that's mm -hmm. one of the weapons that I have. I, God forbid that I ever have to use it, but I do have it, and I highly recommend... To stay with you now, right? It absolutely is. Yeah, it absolutely and it is. Be. And Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it's within reach. So what I what I tend to recommend is a be very careful, be situationally aware, uh, never just leave access uh, totally open. I believe that mm -hmm. you should have uh, checks in place not only for a building like this, but for your borders in your country too. Uh, by the way, that's just a side mm -hmm. point. But but so I think you have to be very careful and you have to be guarded. Now, a lot of Jewish organizations, schools, synagogues, hire a security team to keep an eye on the synagogue while Jews mm. are there either worshiping or assembling for whatever reason. And if they don't do that now, if they haven't done it yet, they need to be thinking about it now. Uh, mm. This is not something that's getting any better. And like you mentioned, around the world, people have uh, have rec reported incidents of anti-Judaism, anti-Semitism. While I, while I mention that, let me just say, the big thing right now, I don't know if you've heard it, but a lot of people are saying, well, people aren't against the Jews. They're not against, uh, they're not anti-Semites. They're against Zionism. I had a Jewish friend call me just uh, yesterday right. and, or messaged mm -hmm. me and said that uh, a friend of hers, I'll just say, had said that they weren't concerned about being a Jew in the U.S. because it's not the U.S. Jews that they're after. They're after these Zionists. Jono, mm. as you know, there's no different. When they hit that man on the head, they didn't ask him if he was a Zionist. He was a Jew. Dave Tyler as told as you and I about them having to lock Jews in a library. Yeah, that's right. And there are many such uh, circumstances, like uh, events like this. And one of those that shocked me was immediately after uh, October 7 happened, there was pro-terrorist um, uh, rallies in Sydney. And they weren't, they weren't yelling um, down with the Zionists, down with the Zionists. They were yelling, they were chanting, gas the Jews, gas the Jews, gas right. the Jews. Right, and uh, this is this is the problem. It's not anti-Zionism is just a way to sugarcoat uh, anti-Semitism. Exactly, exactly, and and we ought to mm. call it like it is. We ought to know that, and uh, and and never forget it. And especially, I'm not Jewish. I'm non-Jewish, but people associate me with Jews because you know, like I said, the Star of David. People that know me, people that follow me on the internet, they know that you know I'm close enough. They not mm. only these these people who hate Jews also hate people who love Jews. I think you've termed me in the past a a uh, philo semite, uh, mm. and 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 that that group is in trouble too. 
they they they've fallen mm. in the bad uh, the bad category from these people who hate the Jewish people. It, it's really really bad, and it's getting worse. So so, what, so tell me, I mean, yeah. if it, let me ask you this question: um, if if a synagogue is not so financially uh, cashed up that it can afford a security service, and they choose to um, uh, rely on a, on a couple of good guys to be armed. Um, what is the best way? I mean, what is the gun control situation? I mean, I understand that I, I, cause I, I ask as an Australian because it's very different yeah. here, uh, than it is there. And I don't know how easy it is for you guys to, uh, arm yourselves. It's certainly easier there than it is here. Um, but I'm wondering how do they go about doing that? And, and how do they go about getting, uh, training to use a weapon if they haven't done so before? Um, uh, what is the process there, Ross? Well, good good questions. First of all, in America, uh, as most people know, first of all, all Americans know this, but but most people in other countries know that we have uh, a right to bear arms in, in the United States. Now, it, it varies from state to state on the laws, so our viewers are from all over the U.S., but I can tell you in the United States, in Louisiana, we have um, we do have gun laws, but they're not mm -hmm. as strict, say, as in New York, where where the Tylers are. Uh, mm -hmm. and other other states have different levels of strictness and so forth. But in Louisiana, I can conceal carry uh, without a permit. This law just passed. Now I already had a concealed carry. I'd been to the training, which which simply means, Jono, that I can carry a weapon. It doesn't have to be out in the open. But in Louisiana, mm -hmm. I can also should I choose to, I could open carry. I could wear it on my mm. side like Wyatt Earp. I don't know if you know the cowboy mm -hmm. Wyatt Earp, but I, yep, I do. Louisiana is is very open in that sense. But to your directly to your question, most synagogues do already uh, are already, unfortunately, because of some of these attacks that have happened on synagogues in the past. Most Jewish mm. synagogues already have things in place in the U.S. Uh, where they have a system whereby they have security uh, that's hired to police the, you know, help people in and out of the synagogue, keep an eye on things and so forth. Mm -hmm. If they don't, I guarantee you, uh, well, they could contact me and I'll help them find some system whereby they can find a, uh, a secure system for their congregants. And that might even be, I get, I know in Louisiana, I could call some friends who are not inclined religiously as I am and say, hey, uh, most of these would be good old boys. They would be Christians, maybe Baptist, and they love mm -hmm. Jews anyway. So I could just say, hey, you know, with all these attacks on the Jewish people, would you mind coming and, and uh, sit with me outside of Jew? They would, they would load up in four-wheel drive pickups. So it, you know, yeah, right. and, and I have actually right. thought about that. You know, God forbid. Yep. But look, in Louisiana, and I think most we we saw. By the way, we saw a thing on the news. I know you probably saw it as well, where Christians flew to Israel just this week, and they're working the vineyards uh, in in the uh, Judea and Samaria because many of the soldiers have been deployed. For this crisis in Gaza, so these um, good old that, Christians that are doing of, a good job. Yeah, yeah, and that reminds me of, uh, and this might be off the topic, but Sar El. I also saw uh, people talking about an organization called Sar El, yeah, um, which uh, was floated on uh, one of the conversations on on Facebook on on one of your shows, I think, perhaps one of ours. I don't know. Yeah, uh, volunteers for Israel. What is what is Sar El? I, you know, it's you know it's one th that? yeah, it's one thing that I'm looking into right now. Um, I I really, I mean, Seth and I have a lot of work going on here, but mm. I really, in some ways, one side of me wants to go to Israel and jump in and help some way. So I'm just entertaining some ideas. I, I, you and I know plenty of people over there. I could find some useful mm. things to do, but one of the things no that I that I just thought about was, hey, what what about Sar El? And one thing we know about Sar El, they have a a, uh, a program where you pick a date. You have to apply. You can't just show up. But if you're accepted, mm. 
and and most people are. They need volunteers right now. You you get approved. The Israelis check you out. You got to have a passport. You have to be willing to and able to take care of yourself while you're there. But you report on a Sunday. They process you in. Even older guys like me, you know, you walk in. They give you a uniform. Um, and and you work on a military post. You wear an Israeli military uniform. And, and look, you might be, I, don't, I think some more qualified people might have more a set of jobs that are related right, yeah. to the military. But, but right. you might be cleaning up at the military post or whatever, but you're uh-huh. helping the you're IDF. Helping. And so I've yeah. I've looked at that, and uh, that's one of the options that I've. Uh, yeah, well, when considered. I when I saw that in the um, in the comment section of the post on Facebook, I thought, well, that's interesting. So I looked at that as well. Maybe you and I will talk about that a little bit later. Yeah. But um, so that is that. So now the other thing that I'm interested in is because so we understand that I think something like seventy five percent of the U.S.'s jury are left leaning. They're more inclined to vote uh, Democrat. Right. They're more inclined as a result to be. Uh, a little gun shy, perhaps, and and certainly um, uh, in favor of tighter gun control, and they may not be uh, equipped as they should be in 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 these kind of um, circumstances. Yeah. What are the st- the stats there? What what sort of statistics do you have? So I tell you, I did find some stats. I didn't. I I want to find more accurate stats. But here is what I found: there hmm. in two thousand and eighteen. One of the most recent polls that was relevant to our subject tonight, 2018, so it's a few years old, 70 plus percent of Jewish respondents in America said they were more, it was more important to control gun ownership than to protect the American right to own and bear arms. Mm. More than 70 percent of American Jews said, Look, we think it's far more important to uh, control gun control than to worry about what your government, your old antiquated document says about you got the right to bear and arms. That's, and generally, that is the, the the position to the left, and and right. they're just echoing that. Okay, so that's the, you would expect that. Keep going. That's and so here here's one of the stats that I found, and I'm still looking to get some updated stats. These are a couple of years old, in fact. Uh, here it is, but it said that uh, Jewish households in America, 13% of Jewish households would report or reportedly gun owners. And take that out of the Jewish world and just non-Jewish world, 41% in America, 41% of households claim to own guns. If you mm. look at Jewish individuals, it's it's less than ten percent of Jewish individuals own guns, and if you if you look at non-Jew, it's almost thirty percent. So there's quite mm-hmm. a disparity between Jews and non-Jews. And and, and I uh, mentioned, by the way, sorry to interrupt, but yeah, I yeah. mentioned that really yeah. those those stats for uh, non-Jews are probably way higher because not everyone's going to raise their hand and go, "Oh yeah, I got some guns at home." I got right, some. right, um, yeah, uh, yeah, you know. Yeah, I th- I think you're right, and and when I saw those numbers, I think again, Dave, I saw in the comments, Dave Tyler said it depends state to state on another question. That too depends, uh, you know, state to state, and and even certain areas like where you've been to where I live, there are a lot of people here who own guns because they're they're very big into hunting and sportsmanship. Uh, I don't hunt. I've never hunted, but I am a gun owner. So, yeah. It. But here's here's something interesting, Jonah. If I can go ahead and take this the next little step, oh. the the Jewish people, American Jews. Again, not all. What you can't say for certain in any of this. Generally, fall out in the Democrat versus Republican, the hmm. left leaning. Uh, and and so what we find is that there, there's not a, a high percentage of gun owners, but here's here's what's going on. It's being reported now on a widespread basis in all media outlets in the U.S. that Jews are buying guns 
record amounts of guns being purchased by Jewish people, and trainers are now reporting that they have people lined up not only to buy guns, but to get training on how to use them. So Mm. I think, now this is my view, I think that is, I say, thank God. I mean, Mm. let's, if you live in a place where you can own a gun to protect yourself when people are threatening to kill you and harm Mm. your family, I am so pleased to see this, and it is at record pace. Uh, yeah, and, and it would be. Yeah. As soon as uh, reality slaps you in the face, you forget about how you want the world to be, and you start looking at how the world actually is, particularly when how the world actually is is threatening to you. Yeah. Um, so you have to consider what you're going to do about that, and, and obviously that's uh, there are a lot of Jews that are doing that. Yeah. Um, it's it's absolutely the reverse in in Israel. Of course, they are faced with the reality of um, uh, you know having uh, enemies on your doorstep right. every day, and as a result, the vast majority of Jews do know how to handle a weapon. Of course, they would because um, uh, military service is mandatory, and uh, and there, and and there are exceptions. Be... Yeah, there there are exceptions. You and I are well, familiar with it. We've been there. We've seen. Uh, Jews in civilian clothes, even yeah, out at restaurants with a, a weapon on their shoulder. Uh, but I and, did, and a large one at that, right? Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. right. Yeah, I, and, I did look up uh, one thing that I. It's not as easy to get a weapon in Israel as it is in Louisiana. I can tell you that. Uh, hmm. you, you, it is very stringent. Not everybody. Just to make one caveat on your comment about the military service, and I know you know this, but our viewers may not. Uh, Jews are required to uh, go in the military. I think it's three years for men, two years for women, something like that. I think that's the way it is. Unless they have an exemption, which they are, some are granted for various reasons we won't go into. But a Mm. person who is an Arab Israeli citizen, as I understand it, they do not have to, but they can. And and we Mm. do have Muslim Druze, we have others, uh, soldiers in the IDF that are not Jews. It, I, as You're I understand, very keen it, about protecting the, the nation of that's Israel. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. That's right. And and I think if you're military, if you're a veteran, you have a much easier way to gain a permit to carry a weapon, which you have to go through qualification. Mm. Now, see, I'm an American uh, gun owner, and mm. I believe that. That that's fine. If they told me you have mandatory training, I'd be fine with that. And and if mm. they even told me I needed to get a psychological test, I don't mind doing that either. But in Israel, go by on. the way, I I did read one yep, stat that eighty percent. I don't know the details on this. I didn't have time to dig into it. Eighty percent of Israelis uh, that put in a license to get a firearm, eighty percent of those mm. are rejected. So I don't know who who is applying for those that they're rejecting. I don't know. Follow up. I I, I'm that. just saying I had to follow up. Go ahead, Jonah. I'm mm. sorry. Jump in there. No, I was just going to say I'm in favor of uh, of uh, a, a training requirement. If you're going to own own a, um, uh, a, a a firearm, uh, I I am in favor of uh, stringent yeah. training. Um, you ought to know how to use it if you're going to own something that's a powerful weapon. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's good. Now, speaking of training, uh, mm-hmm. we have been to a training facility in Israel. Uh, we've we've taken people there on the Tanakh tour, right. and it was a hit. It, it really was um, the favorite, one of the favorite uh, locations, destinations that we went to uh, on that particular tour. And I think it was 2019, 2018, 2019. I think so. Um, and uh, we're going to have to do that again, but it was Caliber 3 in Gush Etzion. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, that, that was, that's probably one of my, the highlights of my times in Israel, not only going there with you, but uh, some know that, that I have been very blessed to work uh, a little bit with uh, Dave and Patty's company, and, and it's got so many different things that Dave and Patty's company uh, is involved in. But one hmm. is training, and and they're looking for they're they're doing a lot to help the Israelis right now. In fact, but several years ago they 
got me into a course on counterterrorism uh, in in Israel. And of course, they called me and said, "Can you do it?" They covered all the training costs and so forth with the company, and I, I went to Gush Etzion, and there met Colonel Gat, G A T, mm-hmm. caliber three, and I loved it. Now this was a, uh, it was a very in depth training, uh, but then I found out by taking that course that you could do a very short half a day kind of training, you could bring a tour or whatever. So when I told you about it, you said, yeah, we got to do this. I was Mm. a little bit uh, anxious thinking that some of our tour participants might be against guns and not like it, but I don't remember anyone that went to to Gush Etzion to Caliber 3 that didn't like it. Do you remember anyone on the tour? Everybody liked it. There were some people that declined to participate, but they they uh, uh, stayed and right. watched. And and um, this was something that we did uh, leading up to Shabbat. We had uh, Friday afternoon, and um, I think we had a number of hours there. Yeah, and it was great. It was it it was just it wasn't just having the opportunity to uh, fire some of the weapons that they use there, but also uh, they showed us some of the tactical training that they go through and also the um, uh, the military dogs that they use, and they had a display of that. Really right. impressive stuff. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to going back there uh, as I, well. One, one thing that I wanted to remind people, when we walked in, if you remember, they have, like, a tactical shop where Israelis can buy weapons hmm. and, you know, yeah. obviously if they have a license and... And uh, so we're walking through, and it serves as a little gift shop as well. And on the wall, in Hebrew, is a verse from the Bible. Do you happen to remember which verse it was? I do know it, but I want to see if you remember. Let me see if Uh, I can remember. Um, uh, Did it have to do with uh, the slingshot? Did it have to do? uh, You're going to have to remind me. Okay. All right. So it was... Uh, it's in Second Samuel. Or the bow. Yeah, the bow. that's right. And and here it is. This is the King James because King James actually gets it closer than most English. And it I'll says really it. he bade them teach the children of Judah the use of the bow. Behold, mm. it is written in the book of Jashar, the book of Yashar, the the uh, mm. the uh, Sefer Hayashar. So this, when I saw this, I thought it was interesting. And then when Colonel Gatt gave us the tour group, our kind of introduction to the place, he said, this is a charge to teach Jews how to defend themselves because we live in such a tough neighborhood. So it was just a fantastic tour. We need to go there again when we go again. And and I think that Jews ought to be taught just like the book of Jasher says, how to use a weapon to defend themselves. Because now, Jono, every neighborhood is has the potential of being dangerous for Jewish people. And, and mm. so I, I highly recommend that people get good training. They get a good weapon that they know how to use. They're very careful, uh, but they are then able to protect themselves and protect their family because these uh, these evil people, uh, they want them dead. They, they want mm. nothing more uh, than to get rid of Jews in the world. It's, it's just, uh, it's pathetic. It's crazy. Yeah, no, it's crazy. And it, it reminds me, by the way, and I don't know if you can recall this off the top of your head. I don't know if it's in Judges or in Joshua, but there is a verse, and I think it's referring to the uh, Philistines, that says that he did not remove them entirely because... Oh yeah, uh, that they may be um, a thorn in the side and irritants in their eyes, that they may know war. Uh, in other words, that they may be continually trained and equipped to uh, to deal with war. Uh, do you remember that verse? Where is that? Uh, well, I I know I just taught a class on uh, Amalek and so forth, and in that class, mm-hmm. I don't remember exactly the the passages, but there are three passages in the Tanakh. Mm-hmm which say that um, if you don't remove these people, the, your enemies, then they will be, you know, uh, prick in your eyes, thorns in your sides, etc. Mm. There are three of those. And then it also says that he didn't remove, that Israel didn't remove 
uh, those who were afflicting them over time. Now, some would yeah. associate the current problems with that. I, I certainly think that currently uh, Israel absolutely has to stamp out this Amalek, which brings me to the final point. Then we need to offer some, maybe get some input from some of our our viewers, but there is this idea in the Talmud that we mentioned at the opening of the show that says if if someone comes to kill you, now mm. that's a that's a strong statement. That doesn't that's not saying if someone's coming to hurt you or if someone talks bad about you or if someone marches against you. It says if someone comes to kill you, rise up and kill him first. And I'm not, again, a Talmudic scholar, but I think that's a good philosophy. If someone comes to harm you or innocent people, I think we have an obligation to move quickly and precisely and take that threat out, match force for force. Uh, when I was in the, the training in Israel at, at Gush Etzion at Caliber 3, mm. one thing I heard repeatedly is, we do not, uh, and I'll just use this term, they don't beat around the bush. They don't treat softly the uh, people, the terrorists. They neutralize mm. them. And what neutralize means is to kill. You, yeah. A terrorist in Israel is very seldom taken hostage if you have arisen to hurt or harm the Jewish people, the, the philosophy, the stand is, you will never do that again. And it's a deterrent. It should be a deterrent. So I'm for that. What Do you have anything else before we open it up and ask some questions? I Yeah, I was just going to, I yeah. found, I'm, I'm conflating two uh, verses, so you're quite right about that. But the one that I was thinking of is Judges chapter 3, verse 2. Mm. Uh, actually, starting from verse 1, it says, uh, these are the nations that the Lord left so that he might test, so that he, oh, this is interesting. There's a typo here. Hey, open, hey, you got your, uh, you got your copy here? Of this? I, wait, yeah, man, let's see. You found a typo? Check this out. There's a typo. Yeah. All right, so, give it um, to me. <laughs> so this is Judges chapter three, uh, verse one. All right, hang How on. Let that? me get there. Let me see if I see it. He's in the nations. Let me put on my reading glasses because maybe I'm just messing this up. Oh, that he might might. That he might might. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna that? have to check the Hebrew, but here's what you do, Jono. Make yeah. sure if it turns out that it is an actual duplication of a word and a typo, you know hmm. Mark Brettler. Uh, yeah. You just need to write him and say, to, "Hey, man." I must write to him and say, "What's what's this about?" Um, but as it says, these are the nations that the Lord left so that he might, might test them, <laughs> uh, uh, test by them all the Israelites who had not known any of the war, wars of Canaan uh, so that the uh, so that succeeding generations of Israel might be made to experience war. Have you found something in the Hebrew or is this a typo? No, I, I'm not looking at the Hebrew. I like that okay. verse, though, and, and I'm glad you, you reminded me of that verse. Uh, mm. it, it is, you don't want a generation of softies. Uh, and, and this is very interesting. And mm. in fact, I'm going to spend some time thinking about that after the show tonight, because yeah, Israel is, has is certainly, boring. Israel has certainly been tested. Dave Tyler is working on a piece. He sent me a preliminary copy uh, just of some notes that he's working on. Uh, it's very, very thought-provoking on, mm -hmm. on how many times Israel has been tested and how many times their enemies have rejected peace. And, uh, but Israel goes through testing often. And, and so we've encouraged our friends that are Jewish to stay ready, uh, stay vigilant, and be prepared. See, this is the thing. Mm. The, the expression we use in the States, especially people like me who do own guns, is it's better to have it and not need it than mm. to need it and not have it. Not have it. You see? Yeah, quite right. Um, I just want to say, uh, Lib g'day, Libby. Uh, Libby said she's reading Exodus by Leon Uris. What a great author he is. 
and uh, and, a, and a phenomenal book and indeed a, a a movie worth watching a couple of times starring Paul Newman, one of my favorite actors. Yeah. Uh, and from the who is Jewish, uh, patrilineal, patrilineally Jewish, and from the founding of the um, first Alia, they were training the children. Uh, before going into the land. Yeah, that's right. And this particular um, uh, book is set in the what I was referring to last week as the illegal alia, if you like, the uh, Jews trying to return to the land when it was under British control and the British trying to stop Jews from coming into the land, believe it right. or not, but yes, they were. Um, and that's where uh, uh, this book is set and it's well worth reading. Absolutely, Libby. Thanks for bringing that up. Interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, just a couple of things while we're waiting. By the way, if we're we're ready now to take a couple of calls, we have a few minutes left, and I'd like to get some input from some of you. Uh, I know that there are other gun owners and and other friends of mine on here that might have some good information to share. I'll just say that uh, there was a discussion going on that uh, that's in the comments where Ronnie Fulcher asked. You know, I wonder what the percentage of gun owners in the South is. And Eric mm. uh, pulled up some stat, uh, stats real quickly from Pew Research and uh, says that it's roughly 36% of Southerners, uh, I guess is what the question he's answering there. But then he said that in 2023, Alabama is pushing 53% and Louisiana is about the same. So I thought that there would be, uh, there would be a higher percentage of gun yeah. owners uh, here. Yeah, that sounds more likely to me too. Yeah, from what I hear. Yeah, yeah. Uh, interesting. Not so in Australia. Um, we had a uh, we disarmed the population in '96 as a result of a, uh, a mass shooting. Uh, one particular individual, uh, you know, was responsible for dozens of, of uh, murders, and um, uh, as a result, the government of the day, which was John Howard, uh, a right-leaning government, conservative uh -huh. government, um, took advantage of the situation and said, well, if one person can, is going to do silly things with guns, horrible things with guns, then none of you can have them. So it took away all the toys, so to speak. And uh, there was a what they called the mandatory buyback and basically disarmed the, uh, the, the legal owning uh, yeah. uh, population. Uh, so now only, you know, criminals can That's have right. guns. All That's those right. who who apply, and it's much more. It is much more stringent here. It's much more difficult to own a gun. Here That's in yeah, that's the thing, isn't it, Jono? It's it's so. And and again, I know that there are multi layers to this debate, and I'm mm. certainly no expert legal opinionist. However, I will say, you know, I like some of the thinking that uh, counters this. We're going to take everyone's gun. It's, it's the idea that uh, I am totally opposed to mass murder and, uh, you know, and things like that, but I don't think you should take innocent, you know, good law-abiding citizens, their mm. guns. It's like if mm. someone drinks and drives, I'm against that too. But just because we have alcoholics that drink and drive, uh, I don't think you should take my license. I don't drink hmm. and drive, so why should you? Yeah. It, it just yeah. it and boggles that is, and the, that is the Generally, that is the leftist position as far as I can understand it is some people do bad things with, uh, uh, with X. Therefore, we don't trust any of you, so yeah. none of you can have X. You're all potentially going to do something like this. Uh, therefore, none of you can have it. It's, it's, and, yeah, and by the way, I should, say, I should say that the stats that we're giving, even though we've already said that they may not be totally accurate, it's based on what mm. we found doing a little bit of research, but, uh, but these stats are based on legal gun owners. Like when I, right. when, when yeah. I pick up a pistol, uh, in fact, Dave got me, Dave and Patty got me my Masada. And mm. when I went to pick it up, I didn't just walk in and say, hey, I'm Ross, I'm here to pick up. You give them your driver's license, you fill out the paperwork, they do a background check, they uh, run the license. And uh, in fact, I didn't even walk out of the store with it. I had to go and, mm. and they did their check and they call me back. And, you know, it depends. Some of the time when I've gone to pick up a gun, 
uh, I've, I've been able to walk out very quickly after they do the, the requisite online checks. Uh, but others have taken longer. And it's not that I have anything in my record, but maybe something flags, they want to check it out. Uh, but again, yeah. most of these, uh, a lot of these heinous crimes that are committed are committed by people who are not legal gun owners, who are not veterans mm. of the military, who've been trained, who've been, it's just, it's really problematic when you think about it. I think I just wanted to make one more time, make underscore this. I think it is wonderful that a growing number of Jewish people who formerly did not want a gun, didn't didn't like guns, mm-hmm. were even against, wanted to tighten gun legislation, that they're now lining up to get guns. Mm. And, and uh, so they should. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, we got. And it, go ahead. Who we got here? Dave, Dave is uh, ready to come on. Dave Tyler, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you, Ross. Um, one one of the um, aspects um, that I think is important in, in the United States, um, the Constitution um, has a set of amendments, the first 10, and they're called the Bill of Rights. And, of course, the second one is the right to own guns. Um, and and so I think from that perspective, uh, it's it's just indigenous in the United States. Um, the the problem is the amount of um, gun ownership uh, is um, is by far, and I don't know all the the stats. It's by far a legal ownership, and they are almost never the um, source of um, a gun used in a killing. Uh, most people who want to kill somebody um, uh, get illegal guns, and, a good and so point. that is uh, that's a problem that we have. Is that um, there? There's so many guns in the United States that that you know you can get them very easily. You know, Saturday night specials and stuff of this nature. Um, mm-hmm. The other thing that's really causing. <clears throat> Uh, the ATF problems is you can um, get these 3D printing machines and make your own gun um, wow. a lot simpler than you could have before. And um, the danger is that it's going into certain plastics and and they can now get them by, um, you know, uh, detectors saying, saying that. Um, uh, on the gun um, control side, um, we, we teach every NRA course there is. And we have certified instructors that can teach instructors. And one of the things I I think people um, unfortunately um, take uh, wrong is that it's a weapon. And there is a a lot of training that should go on. Um, And and for instance, if you're going to drive a car, you you have to take a written course. You have to pass an actual driving course, right. and then you're checking every, every so often with your license. Are your eyes good and all this? And people just accept that. They would not accept that about guns. A lot of folks get very angry. But I but I do know this: having trained people, um, and three years later you say, "When was the last time you used your gun?" Oh, I've never used it. Well, yeah. you you don't go out to the range and shoot. Right. Um, you drive your car all the time. So so the one thing I caution people is, um, you know, uh, I very much support people being able to, to get guns, but they should practice and, and, and use them. Uh, what happens when a gun jams? What happens, you yeah. know, what was the range of your gun? Um, you've seen movies where people hold pistols upside down. Well, that's that's no way to shoot a gun. Right. Um, and 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 then the other thing is, which gun do you have for the scenario? So a lot of people want a pistol for protection in their home. The best thing in a home is a shotgun, and it's uh, way, widely yep. it's widely known. Um, there was a there was a, a just a reason a, a recent um, uh, study where they said that um, 72% of uh, burglars hearing the pump of a shotgun left the house. Yeah, They didn't really? even have to do that. They just, the clicking of the shotgun is like, oh, no, I'm not going there. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
and and so so that's an issue also the problem with a pistol is it it can go through many walls and kill your child or your animal oh, yeah. or the next door where a shotgun won't do that um and and then you don't even have to be um very accurate with it uh, because the shotgun spreads out so oh, yeah. it's knowing knowing the weapons it's the same thing like this what kind of car do you need well, I got to drive 100 miles every day. Well, gas mileage is going to be a big deal. That's or right. I got to tow a trailer. Well, then, and I'm going to go off road or whatever it is. And you buy the the car that fits the or the automobile, or you might might have two or three. I have a lot of guns um, because you know I, I I have some historical guns that my my grandfather owned and and um, they're in the family since then. And then um, I have um, different guns so. If I'm if I'm out in my car, um, it's a shotgun isn't going to be what I want. If I'm yeah. in my house, it's a shotgun. Um, the other thing is, um, you know, you really got to practice safety, and you know, you, you have little grandchildren coming over and so forth, and you just don't want them to to right. have any access to it. So there there is a responsibility is what I'm trying to say that comes with yeah. guns, and yeah. um, and there's and and I believe that if you're responsible. Um, you, you you don't drink and drive, right? Yeah. I mean, so you're responsible mm -hmm. with your car. Be responsible with your guns. And um, and the other issue is um, that, you know, even for us, forgetting all the problems there are, when I go um, in on a hike out in, in the uh, Adirondacks, uh, there's bears. There's uh, wolves now, and there's yeah. mountain lions that have come back, or the cougar. Well, really? I don't ever want to kill one of those animals, but if they're charging me, if I cut in front of, um, I cut between a mama and bear and her cubs, you mm. know, I, I, it's yeah, either bear or me, I, I, the bear's going, you know. Mm. And then to say what you said about, you know, protecting yourself, um, one of the things that I, I do agree with, and, and I, I believe it's a mistranslation, and we can argue about this, but, you know, the King James, thou shall not kill. Um, mm, yeah. it's, it's, it's really been over beaten by Prager and all the other people that it's thou or not murder or yeah. kill, you know, without a purpose. Um, we can argue about the terms, um, because they are used differently. But my point is, I think that that's the way I see it is yeah. that, um, that, uh, yeah, you can't just go around killing people, but, mm. but, but if someone's going to, um, affect your life, um, I, I believe I have the right to defend myself and, um, I don't have to have a gun to do that if there's a baseball oh, yeah. bat close enough. And so so that issue for me is 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 kind of cut and dry. Um and 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 again, um the the um the issue now that has me um you know a little nervous is the the rise in anti Semitism is just mm -hmm. it's astronomical and you know mm -hmm. I'm I'm more aware. Situational awareness is everything, you know. I really want to uh, my wife and I had I'll call it a discussion this morning. We have been married for 42 years, so yeah. I wouldn't say it's an argument. But I said, you know, there are uh, thousands and thousands of people that have been hired by certain groups to go out and look at pro-Israel and, um, and, and Zionist type of uh, websites. And my mm -hmm. wife, you know, on, on her Facebook is going on and on about this. And I said, well, you have so much open on your Facebook, honey. Hey, you you can't do this because there's people out there that are there, that are that are bad people, and yeah. and the the issue is you you know, um, uh, I, I I'm not saying not to be pro Zionist, but um, it's who you allow access to be pro Zionist, yeah. and and that's all I'm saying is that you, you situational awareness, you know, in this world we have, uh, you have thousands of people. I I saw. Um, a uh, huge room in Saudi Arabia where the um, um, king has all these people uh, looking for um, anti, any anti-Saudi or anything against the royal family. And if you're caught saying something, yeah. um, I see Timothy wants to talk. If you're caught saying something against the royal family, they know who you are. You're, yeah. you're done. You can and, find and, yourself and so, mm. Yeah, and so we have to just be careful. I'm glad that Seth has really helped us with this Discord because we really want to be able to um, close in when we're talking to one another, and 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 that's and that's an okay thing when we're talking to one another. 
like this and openly. I just don't want someone else hearing what I have to say like this in, in, in a public forum Appreciate because it, right. it's dangerous. And, uh, thank you, Dave. So, uh, thank you, Seth. All right. Hey. All right. Thanks Bye. a lot, Dave. Timothy, I am inviting you to speak. Good to have you with us. Welcome to the show, Timothy. All right. I gave you permission. You may have to unmute. I don't see him on the stage, Ross. Okay. I wonder, uh, we'll give him just a minute. Is there anyone else who would like to uh, say a few words while we wait on Timothy? And uh... um, Actually, I, I wouldn't mind. I, uh, just on something that Dave said, we actually did a program on that. We When we were going through the 10 words um, and we touched on, uh, yeah. as, as it appears in the Moses scroll, you shall not kill the soul of your brother, I am Elohim, your Elohim. Um, and we did touch on that. Does it mean you just can't kill wholesale or is it in the context of murder? Uh, and it's well worth going back and, and having to listen to that program. But um, uh, we did conclude that uh, you uh, that it is within the context of murder. You, you, you just can't go around uh, killing people because you want to. But there's an interesting point that Dave brings up that because it is a commandment, it places value upon the individual. And if you are told that you just can't kill people, right? You shall not right. kill. That means that your life as well, as well as theirs, has value. Uh, you then have a right to protect that which has value. And uh, uh, so you should be able to arm yourself and protect yourself and protect the life that you have. Yeah. Well, and... Go ahead, and, have we got uh, Timothy? I don't know. Is he, no. is he... I don't think so. I don't see him on the stage. You were going to say? No, I was uh, I was going to say yeah. Dave Dave covered that point very well, and and there is even though people can argue the semantics and does the word mean this or does the word? Let's see. Here we go. Here's Timothy. Uh, Timothy, we're going to try it again. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Got Good you. Night, welcome. Night. Welcome to the show. How's it going? Just fine. You can hear me, right? Yes, can sir. Hear we hear you. All right. Yeah, I don't know how I got it unmuted, but uh, anyway, I just wanted to make a comment about some stuff I've seen out there on the ether okay. about everything that's, that's going on. Uh, as we know, there's been over 6 million illegals cross into the United States mm. since the current administration has been in. Uh -huh. Way more than that before that you know if you total it all up 10 million people mm. it is known and has been known for over 20 years about sleeper cells in the united states of different groups hezbollah muslim brotherhood hamas uh there's three such groups known in north carolina alone just to say that to say this for everyone to be diligent, yeah. whether you're a member of UIWU or a Bible believer. Mm -hmm. The date that's coming up, y'all have probably heard, you know, the Day of Remembrance in England, 11-11 uh, for yeah. World War II. Yeah. Veterans yeah. Day is November the 11th. That's when the First World War ended, 11-11 mm -hmm. at 11. There has been rumblings that there may be some sort of jihad on 11 11. Mm -hmm. Kind of a mirror of 9 11. Mm -hmm. So be very diligent this coming Shabbat. I just wanted to throw that out there for everybody and pass it on. You don't know. Yeah, and it's no longer far-fetched to speculate or talk about things like this, um, particularly in light of the, the kind of attack that we saw in Israel. And then the response of the pro-terrorism response around the world, in, in your country, in my country, and uh, everywhere around about. And I think uh, we mentioned at the beginning of the program a thwarted attack uh, organized by Iran and was to be executed by Hezbollah operatives in, in um, Brazil. Mm. Uh, that, that just occurred um, or that was just thwarted, yeah. So it, it, it's not um, 
ridiculous to suggest such things and diligence is certainly uh, um, and vigilance is uh, most certainly called for. Yeah, and and to your point, Timothy, you know, it's it's uh, people. It doesn't hurt to be ready, you know, because we we don't know. I mean, is this some kind of? Is it real? Is there really something that's going to happen on eleven eleven? I don't know. But but now mm. in hindsight, we look back at the attack that happened in Israel on October the seventh. Turns out it was fifty years to the day uh, to the Yom Kippur War. And, yep. uh, you know, so was that intentional? I don't know, but it certainly, it, it certainly seems, uh, uncanny to find that association. So mm -hmm. there, there is a large and growing population of anti-American, anti-West. It's not just American. It's, it's for mm -hmm. any country who has the values of, of the West, Australia, I would include, mm -hmm. obviously, uh, you know, but it, but but look, there are enemies within. I mean, clearly enemies within. And in our case, some of them are in the offices in our government. And and one of them yep. just got censured uh, the I other day for her hate speech. And wasn't that Yay. overdue? My goodness. No. I'm, I'm surprised it took so long. Uh, Rashida Tlaib. See there, you got us all stirred up, Timothy. We didn't mean to cut you off. We go ahead and and uh, if you have no, other I'm comments, I'm done. I was I'm on, I was just trying to figure out how to cut myself off here. I'm done. That's all I wanted thanks, to say. Hey, good, thanks, good to thanks, hear from Timothy. Me yeah, thanks, mate. Uh, uh, yeah, I was surprised that that took yeah. so long, but I'm glad that that finally um, uh, finally happened. And I hope that um, it's just the beginning of the kind of pressure on the quote unquote squad of the Democrat Party. Um, uh, I, I mean, I find her to be a vile human being. She is I do absolutely pro-terrorist. Yeah, I do too. And I think, goodness. I think, as as I understand it, here's all this was, Jono. You know, it's kind of a, you're, you know, it. What what's it going to do? I mean, she's already posting. I keep an eye on her Twitter and all, just because mm. I watch all sorts of anti-Americans on there, just to kind of keep an eye out. But uh, she's already, you know saying, I will not be silent. I'm going to speak up on behalf of my people and mm. yada, 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 yada. So we, but we mm. do have to be vigilant. Uh, it, Dave and Timothy brought up some great points. Anyone else have a comment that they want to get in before we close out? Uh, I'll go ahead and tell you that I haven't nailed down my topic for this coming Saturday. Uh, mm -hmm. but I will, I will put that out in time so that people have a, an opportunity to kind of get ready for it. I did a class mm -hmm. this last Saturday that I called the Holy Wars. And, uh, I would highly recommend anyone who's interested in the current events and, and a biblical approach to some of this, uh, to take a listen to that. Uh, but I don't know what I'm going to talk about yet, Jono. I've got to start working on that tonight. Even I'm going to begin to... Mm -hmm. I've got a few notes. I just don't know. I hadn't nailed it down yet. Uh, I don't see um, any hands raised, but go, go ahead, Jono. I was just going to say, uh, there was something that I was thinking about bringing up, a conversation that I had uh, this week, but I'm thinking maybe we'll save that um, till next week. Perhaps we can talk about it then, but we already touched on it earlier in the program, and that was to do with replacement theology, and it's kind of the, the little sister, if you like, to uh, anti-Semitism. Um, and, and I wonder if perhaps we might talk about that next week. We'll, we'll give that some thought, uh, I like because it. it is an I, interesting topic and there are, I, there are different, it, yeah. yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, I like that idea. I'm already just hearing you bring it up for the first time. Uh, that mm -hmm. might be a good topic because it is one of those, as you say, um, you, you let a little bit in and it just goes off. I mean, mm hmm mm-hmm. Oh, so listen to Doug Murray and John Anderson. He's one of our guys, John Anderson. And uh, I, I, like I him listened a lot. to that uh, today. Really... I, I listened to that today, Doug Murray and uh, John Anderson. It was most excellent. Is that right? So I, I really like John Anderson. I really like Doug Murray. I haven't watched that yet. So uh, send us the link, uh, Libby, or if you've got it there, Ross. But uh, I'd like to listen to that. Uh, she said, uh, brought out a lot of uh, many great points talking about um, taking visas off those who hate. A country, why let them stay? I absolutely, I absolutely agree. Um, the, the West have 
damaged themselves uh, terribly by um, uh, just having these the almost open borders. And yeah. in fact, that's what you are dealing with, as, as Timothy oh, no was talking doubt. about earlier on. But um, it, it's funny. Yeah, it's so refreshing when you hear intellectual conversations by people who just simply don't kowtow to the political mm. correct speak. And that's one of the things that John Anderson begins the interview with, with Doug Murray. And he's mm. basically saying, you've taken on some hard hitting subjects. Uh, you know, how and why did you come to that? And his answer, mm. though, much more eloquent than I'm saying it here. He said, you know, there's something about just being honest uh, to mm. yourself, you know, and, and you and I, Jonah, have had a conversation, several conversations over time. You have always been more direct, uh, more, um, I, I don't know, that's the word I, that I think of, more direct, whereas I would try to be diplomatic, and maybe even though I have strong inclinations to a certain belief or whatever, you know, I've kind of kept my opinions to myself. But I don't know uh, if it's just because of October 7th. I think I was already getting this way. But I'm done, mm. Jono. I am done. Uh, it, if, it, if, it creates a tipping point, doesn't it? And, and it we does. talked about that last week as well, that um, the polarization as a result of this event is strong. And yeah. uh, people who were uh, sitting by the fence or just holding by the fence uh, are now... Uh, the, the fence has been electrified, and you just have to take a side. And yeah. and you're right, I'm a little bit. And and look, you know, sometimes it's not always helpful. But look, this is why I'm wearing the hat. This is why I'm wearing my uh, armband. And I'll I'll go out like this, and I'll I'll be pro provocative in order to have the conversation. And um, and I had one such conversation yesterday. And yeah, we might talk about that next week. But um, I, you know, I understand what Dave's saying about hey, choose the circumstances by which you are vocal and uh and obvious about which side you stand yeah um because you you don't want to bring it on home um but uh yeah cho choose your battles and and but when i go out you know to the shops or whatever if i'm going to be in public oh I'll, I'll just put that on my wrist that is yeah. the bare minimum uh that i can do just let people know which side i stand and i'm i'm happy to have that conversation but yeah if you're going to do that uh situational awareness yeah yeah well <laughs> no i I think uh, I, th I I do want to say if if this conversation if you think that this conversation might have uh, benefited you or might benefit someone else we would ask you to help us share this around and the other thing is if uh, for those who will be listening to this when we air it uh, tomorrow mm. night uh, based on where we're at now we're on Wednesday we're going to put it out Thursday night uh, we're mm. going to put that out and if People listen to that, and they want to be on the next uh, studio mm. audience, our guest Because people uh, have been panel. asking, yeah, tell us how to do yeah, that. If, if they want to do that, they, they can be part of what we're doing here by supporting what we're doing in Ross K. Nichols TV. They can join mm. what we call the Yakad, which is Hebrew for together. They can either join our Patreon. The links are in this video. Or they can hmm. join the YouTube channel, which is uh, also uh, on this YouTube channel. You just click join, and and that's mm -hmm. all it takes. And uh, we we ask people to to come in, and we just do this through our server on Discord, and it's a much safer environment. So we hope that and it's many a much safer environment. It has to be done that way, as we found out uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Yep. All right. So Jono, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Uh, I'm very thankful for our friends. I, I really appreciate uh, the comments that have been rolling in the comment section. Mm. It helped guide the conversation. Your input is very important to us. Dave Tyler, thank you for coming on and giving us some of your thoughts. Also, Timothy Thompson. Uh, thanks, everybody. Libby and Eric and Clody and uh, quite a few of you. We appreciate your comments very much and look forward to being with you again next week so jono so, any parting words my friend that's all that's all my friend but uh yeah yeah same time next week and i look forward to seeing everyone then all right take care everybody Cheers.